Thank you, Betty. We're glad that you joined us this morning for our uh, morning worship here at Mayfield Road Baptist Church. If you're a guest of ours, we would love for you to go online at mayfieldroad.org slash connect. And there's a card there that you can fill out. Also, if you have prayer requests this morning, uh, we would love for you to uh, put that on that card and send it to us so we can be praying for you. We look forward to what God is going to say this morning in, um, in the word that Doug is going to bring. And uh, we look forward to worshiping with you. We're going to start now with a song called You're Worthy of My Praise. And these ladies have some scripture that they're going to uh, share with you right now. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God, the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done great, gloriously. Let us be made known to all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst, the Holy One of Israel. Let's sing again. I will worship. I will worship. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. I will praise you. I will praise you. With all of my strength. With all my strength. I will seek you. I will seek you. All of my days. All of my days. I will follow. I will follow. All of your ways. All your ways. I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. You alone I love to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. I will worship. I will worship. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. I will praise you. I will praise you. With all of my strength. With all my strength. I will see.
with our God, the one that our hearts do hunger for, and the one who loves us and who pursues us, and who welcomes the opportunity to listen to his children. And so we're grateful today that we get to come, and we get to worship him, and we get to carry our requests to him. And so this morning, if you would join me as we pray. Our Father, we are so grateful that we get the privilege of coming to you. And we get to carry our concerns to you. And God, we know that when we do, we're not just throwing words up at the ceiling. But we are carrying our heart's cry to our loving Father who sees us, who knows us. And who understands far better than we could ever understand. Exactly what it means to be heard and exactly how we need you to answer. And God, we're grateful that when you listen, you don't just understand, but you have the wisdom to know what to do and the power to do it. God, we understand your wisdom is far above our own, and sometimes you don't do things the way that we expect you might. Sometimes your timing isn't what we would hope for. And yet, because we know your character, we've seen your faithfulness in our past. We know that you prove faithful in the future. And so, God, I pray on behalf of our church family this morning for those particularly who are carrying a weight of loneliness this week. I pray, Father, that your presence would comfort them, that they would know you are with them, that you are holding their hand. I pray, Father, that you would would work to, to show us that we can still be connected even as we're apart. Father, for those in our church family who are weighed down with financial fears and concerns and the burdens that this time has placed on them, God, I pray that you would help each of us to rest in knowing that you own the cattle on a thousand hills, that you provide for our daily bread. God, that you have always given us what we've needed and you will continue to supply our needs. I pray that you would help us to rest in knowing your provision and knowing that you work through your people to meet, to meet our needs. God, for those in our church family who are just weary, I pray that you would strengthen them by your spirit. That we would remember that even when our strength runs out, yours never does. That you give rest to the weary and you give strength to the weak. 
God, that's who you are. That's what you do. Whatever we come carrying, you're able to meet it. And so meet us this morning in the way that we need. Strengthen your people. And God, would you continue the work that you're doing? Because we know even in this time, you're at work in ways to redeem this for your purposes. And we trust you for that. So strengthen our faith. And Father, let this time be a time we hear the word from you that we need to hear. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And in Matthew 4, verse 4, it says, But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We're reading from Psalm 19, verses 7 through 10. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise and simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The laws of the Lord are true, each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even honey dripping from the cup. Christ to face uncertain times. We're not the first of your people who've ever faced difficulty and just gathered around your word needing to hear a word of encouragement. We're not the first ones needing your spirit to strengthen our hands for the day. And all those who've come before us have seen your faithfulness. And so we pray, Father, that again, you would speak through the scriptures to shape us to be the people you're calling us to be. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Lee and our frontline group. Thank you all so much for that. It was, it was good to see faces of our church family, of course, uh, as we got to share in some of those scriptures together. So thank you, uh, all of you who participated in that. Uh, I want to remind you first thing today that uh, as we continue in this time, uh, we continue to follow the latest updates from the CDC and our local government officials. And so we do remain closed uh, for the foreseeable future for all activities and services on our campus. Um, but as we look to the future, uh, our staff has been working on a variety of contingency plans that uh, will be adjusted as the way forward becomes clear. Uh, right now, of course, there are too many unknowns for us to, to responsibly make any set plans. Um, but we want you to know that we are striving uh, to prepare for the months ahead, and we're striving to be wise as we think through what's the, the right way forward, and as we prepare to uh, kind of share that with you in the days ahead. And so we want to let you know that's kind of what we are working on. During this time, of course, our life group leaders uh, are helping us stay connected and identify needs, 
And if you uh, are a part of a group, uh, you know what a, a gift that is. If you're not a part of a group, uh, we are working on setting up a virtual group, of course, and we want you to be able to take advantage of that. And so you can email me, Doug, at MayfieldRoad.org, if that would be of help to you. Um, parents, uh, remember that uh, our Mayfield Road kids and Mayfield Road student ministry groups uh, are putting out a lot of great re resources, and we want you to take advantage of, of that. Um, we think there's a lot of good stuff there that can help. And don't forget to check out our Family Resources tab on our website. And we're going to drop the link to that in the comments section of this video. Uh, finally, I want to thank you so much for continuing to support uh, our church's ministry during this time. Uh, like all families, of course, we've had to adjust uh, and are adjusting uh, just to the needs of the season while continuing to carry on the work of Christ. We know that there's an opportunity uh, and there's a need for us to continue to be a light uh, in a dark time. And through your faithful giving, uh, you're enabling us to do that. And uh, so I want to say thank you for all of you doing what you can. Um, this is how we get through this as a church family. And so thank you for doing that. And uh, just remember, uh, for, uh, for giving, of course, you can give online through your bank uh, or our website by mail or in person by using the drop-off. But thank you again. That really is enabling us to carry on uh, meeting the needs of those around us and in our church family. So thank you for your help with that. Well, last week we started a new series called In This Together. And in this series, we are uh, looking at a book that was a letter Paul wrote to the church of the Philippians at a time when he was under house arrest. He'd been there under house arrest, and the Philippians got word of it, and they sent a gift. They sent some money to help meet Paul's needs during that time. And this letter is Paul's uh, thank you note back to them. Uh, just acknowledging what it means to him that they are continuing to stand with him in this time. He's acknowledging that, hey, I recognize we are in this together. And you've shown that by your love and by meeting my needs at this time. And uh, the same is true for us as a church family. Um, even while we're separated, we are in this together because we're followers of Christ. We're, we're a church family. And even while we're apart, we are together in this season. And so uh, today, uh, we're reminded, of course, that God is working in us and through us. And as we get into the scripture passage today, we're going to take a little closer look at what God is doing in us. And we're going to see what Paul was praying God would do in the Philippians and what we learn that God is doing in us even at this time. And so if you have a Bible close by, let me ask you to go ahead and turn to Philippians chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 7 today. And Paul has just written what we looked at last week where he was uh, thankful. He mentioned how thankful he was for the Philippians and for what God is doing in them and through them. And uh, we pick up in verse 7 today as he's kind of continuing that thought of gratitude. He writes, it is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. And whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. So Paul is explaining how thankful he is for the Philippians, not just for their gift, but that they've stood with him for all these years. They have been his partner in carrying on the work of Christ. And he just is writing to tell them what, he, what they mean to him, what he, he thinks about how much they mean to him, how grateful he is for their involvement in his life, not just for the gift, but that they have been able to link arms in the work of Christ. And as you can read, of course, it's a very open and vulnerable moment for Paul. He's really laying it all out there, just how much they mean to him, how much he loves them, how much he cares about them and longs to be with them. And it's pretty emotional. You almost wonder what's going on in Paul's mind. It's one of the more emotional passages for Paul uh, that we read. And you wonder, maybe, maybe his circumstances have him more emotional just as he's separated from anybody, everybody under house arrest. He's, he's a little bit more emotionally fragile these days. Or maybe it's 
because he now realizes what a gift he has with this group of believers. And he's expressing that. And it, it makes me think, you know, for all of us, you know, I think one thing that we're learning these days is how to appreciate the gift that we have in our church family. You know, I, I think we understand, we see in a little different way what a gift it is to be able to gather together and to love and hug one another and to, to just walk with one another through life. And I think uh, as we look forward to the day when we're able to, to gather again, I, I think when that time comes and we're able to responsibly do so, uh, we're going to, to come with a little extra gratitude, a little deeper sense of appreciation, maybe than we've ever had before, of what a gift it is to be a church family, to link arms with one another as we carry on Christ's work together. I know I'm looking forward to that as, as many of you are as well. But Paul goes on to share that because of his love for the Philippians, because he knows that they're still a work in progress, there's something that he's praying for them. He's praying that God would continue his work in them in a particular way. Look in verse 9. He says, And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. So when Paul's talking here about their love abounding more and more, he has in mind specifically their love for God and their love for others. Remember, this is what Jesus said are the two greatest commandments, that we love God with all of your heart and you love your neighbor as yourself. And so that's what Paul has in mind. And he's saying, guys, what I'm praying is that the love that you have in you, the love that you've expressed to me by this gift, this love for God and love for others, I'm praying that that will continue to just grow up. I'm praying that will continue to well up in you and it'll just spill out and it'll shape the way that you think, the way that you live. I'm praying that it will just fill up you and just come out of you in more and more ways. I'm praying that it will grow and it'll overflow into your life. And in fact, maybe a good picture of what Paul is praying for is... Uh, these volcanoes that some of us used to make when we were kids. Have you ever done this? You know, the, the baking soda volcano. If, you, if you've ever done this, you know, when you put in the baking soda and then you add the vinegar, everything that's inside just comes bubbling up and spilling out over. Well, that's kind of a good picture of what Paul is praying will happen to the Philippians. That the love that's inside of them for God and for others that it will just well up and continue to grow and that it'll bubble over into their lives, that it'll overflow into them in a powerful way. And the first area of their life that he mentions, that he, he wants to see their love overflow into, is the way that they think. He says here, I'm praying that your love may abound in knowledge and depth of insight. He's praying that it would shape, their love for God and others would shape the way that they think about things in their world. You know, sometimes we have it in our mind that thinking is logical and love is more emotional. And like oil and water, the two don't really meet much. But that's not at all how the Bible talks about it. The Bible shows us that love, it's not a feeling, it's a commitment. And so when we talk about loving God, we show that by our commitment to obey God. And our love for others is actually our commitment to seek the good of others. And so Paul is saying, this is how you should do. Your love should grow up. It should overflow into your thinking so that it shapes how you think through issues. When you're forming your opinions about things and thinking about, uh, about decisions you have to make, I'm praying that your love would be the filter that you run all of those ideas and thoughts through. That your love for God and love for others will be what directs your thinking. And that's really kind of the takeaway for us is we need to let love direct your thoughts. For all of us, that's a good point of application. We need to let love direct your thoughts. Because like the Philippians, we too 
are a work in progress. God's not done with any of us. We're all still being made to be more like him. And one of the signs of that progress God is doing in us is that we become more loving people. And that starts in our minds. It starts in our thoughts. And so we want to let love, love for God and love for others, be the filter that we run all of our thoughts through, that we process our ideas and our opinions and our our perspectives through. And so we need to pay attention to our thoughts, especially in this season, especially in times when our anxiety is a little higher than normal. Because sometimes, you know, we kind of push things aside. If you're like me, things like this, when, when anxiety is high, we start to focus more on what we want to do and our goals. And anybody who slows us down or gets in the way of that, we start to view them as an obstacle or even a threat. But that's not what we're called to as followers of Christ. We're called to see the people around us as a person God loves. So, you know, maybe you've been like this where you've been out at the grocery store and, and you know, the people around you are kind of slowing you down or getting your way. You start to see them as something less than what they are. I've been there and probably all of us have these days. And that can just as easily creep into the way that we think about those who are closest to us. But as followers of Christ, we want to let love direct our thoughts. And so we need to start being aware of those thoughts and start letting love be what directs us so that we see each person around us, every person that we come in contact with is a person made in God's image. Every person that you see, whether they're wearing a mask or not, you look in their eyes, you're looking into the eyes of someone created in God's image who is deeply loved by him. Someone whose life matters. And so we need to let love direct our thoughts in that way so that we think about them in that way. And even how you view the ideas and the events of the world, even how you think about some of the stuff that's going on around us, we need to let love shape how we think about all this. We need to let love shape how we assess and analyze what we hear coming out all the time. Because love for God and love for others, those are the prime values of following Jesus. Those are the key marks that God is at work in us and that he's making progress to make us more like Jesus. So let love direct your thoughts. But that's not all. Paul goes on to say love should also influence the way that we live. He wants their love to abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they can live pure and blameless lives and they can have the fruit of righteousness or the the evidence of right living show up in the way that they live. And so he's saying that your love should overflow and spill out into the way that you live and it should keep moving then into your actions. It should overflow into your thoughts And it should keep flowing out into the actions that you have so that love actually is what motivates what you do. It doesn't just shape what you think. It motivates what you do. And so the takeaway for us here is we should let love direct our thoughts. We should also let love drive our actions. Love is what should direct and motivate what we do in our lives. This is just taking it a step forward. Further, where love is a filter not just for our thoughts, but for our actions, for what we do and the way that we live our lives each day. And I could give a thousand examples of this because in our church family, we see this all the time, where we let love drive our actions. You know, you see this every week when you tune in. It's love that drives our worship team and our tech team to be here to put on this service every week. I'm grateful for them and know you are too. It's love that drives our life group leaders to make the phone call and arrange the virtual meetings. It's love that drives our deacons to reach out to those in our church family who are in need. It's love that's driving all of you to reach out to one another and support one another and see you know, how you can help in this time. It's love that drives husbands and wives to Give each other a little extra grace these days and to lean in and to do a little extra problem solving to figure out how do we walk through this season together. 
It's love that drives parents to support their kids through this time with the school and the questions and all just the extra, the extra stuff that comes with it. It's love that's driving our church members to start thinking in new ways about how can we meet needs, not just for us, but for those around us. You know, I've gotten some really cool uh, ideas that I've heard from those in our church family, things that they're doing or things that they're trying to do just to reach out to those around them and to be a light in a dark time. And it's love that drives all of that. Love for God and love for others that's driving those actions, leading us to be more like Jesus, leading us to live in the way that he's calling us to live at this time. And so for us, I just want to encourage us. This is who we're called to be. This is what we're wanting to do. We want to let love continue to overflow into our thoughts. We want it to bubble up so it shapes our thoughts, so it directs how we think about things. But we want it to keep on overflowing out so that it drives our actions. And that'll work in even the most mundane ways. You know, if you want to think about it really, what we're doing in this time of physical distancing, the reason why we're doing that, that at least the prime motivating factor for us, is out of love for the most vulnerable. And we want to continue to live in that way. We understand as we look forward you know, to moving past this time that one thing that we're learning in this time or what we're practicing is that little reminder that love for others, it does cost us something frequently. And yet, that's what it means to follow Jesus, to love God and to obey Him, even when it's not what we would choose to do. To love others and seek their good, even when it's inconvenient for us. This is just another way that we practice that and we grow in that. And so, church family, I, I want to remind us, we, we want to let love drive our actions. And the reason why, Paul tells us here at the end, He wraps up by reminding the Philippians that when they live this way, when they're continuing to to be shaped to be more like Jesus, the fruit is that ultimately God gets the credit. People see the work that God is doing in them. They see that they're, they're a work in progress, but it's a progressing work as they progressively become more like Jesus. And people give God the credit for that. They say, there's no way... They could just get better on their own. There's something happening in them to change them. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's that God they're worshiping. And God gets the honor and the credit for the transforming work that he's doing in the Philippians' lives. And the same thing has been and will be true in all of us. As we continue to be a work in progress, as we continue to become more like Jesus... I mean, God's going to get the credit for that. God's going to get the honor. People are going to see and notice there's something different about those people who follow Jesus. And the way that they have even gone through this time, the way that they've continued to hold fast, there must be something to that. I'm confident that God is going to get the credit through this season for how he leads his people through. And so for us... We want to remember, we want to follow God's way. We want to follow Jesus and become more like him. We want to let love direct our thoughts. We want to let love drive our actions. Because, yeah, we are all still a work in progress. And that's the way we want to go. Letting love direct our thoughts and drive our actions. We're all still a work in progress. But we know that it's a work that our God will be faithful to complete in all of us. And when he does, he's getting the credit for that. Let's pray. Father, we're thankful for what you're doing in us at this time. And we pray that you would continue to do that. We pray that you would shape the way that we think that your love would be what is the primary factor 
in how we think about our world, how we view others, how we make our decisions. God, we pray that your love working in us, your love, our love for you, our love for others, that it would drive our actions, what we do, the things we say, the cards we write. God, ultimately the point is that we become more like Jesus because it honors you. And so, Father, I pray that you would continue to do that. Continue to work in us now. God, we're a work in progress, every one of us, but it's a work that you are carrying out and you're using it in ways that even we may not see now, but we will one day. And so carry it on, Father. Thank you for the promise that you will complete it. You will finish what you started. And we honor you for that. God, as we go out this week, enable us, help us to let love characterize our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're glad that you've joined us this morning, and uh, we hope and pray that you have a good week as we go about. So please let us know if you have prayer concerns or uh, anything else that we can help you with. We'd love to do that. If you would now join hands, if you can, with those that are in your house, and let's sing together our benediction, Grace, Love, and Fellowship. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the love of God our Father and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us. May the grace of Christ our Savior and the love